In this video, we're going to be looking at a couple of ways we can use custom data types in our Flutterflow apps. So I have got a sample app here, my sort of demo app, what I use for my sort of demonstrations, different stuff on it all the time. And in this particular instance, I've got some cycling information. So we've got a user's name, sort of their FTP, which is just a cycling sort of term, what kind of bike they use and the email. And what we're doing, we're going to be storing that in a app state variable via a custom data type. So over here on the left hand side, the data types are on that tab there. So if you click on it and I'll click on the user details one, this is the one we're going to be using. Now to create a custom data type, you simply click on add a new data type, give it a name and then add some fields so call it test one and then we can give our data type the usual different field types uh, and this is already got one made up called user details and they're all strings we've got the name the email the FTP and I've called it manufacture the type of bike they use so what we're going to do we're assigning this data type to an app state variable and then we can store the information in it so if we go to the app states and you can see some different bits and pieces here I've used on this app but the one I'm interested in is at the bottom and we have got an app state variable called user and the data type is data and we're keeping it persisted true uh, that is so your user when they log out and in it stays on the device only when you remove the app from the device it gets reset so I've done a video on variables which you can see on the screen now if you want to go and watch it so you'd simply add an app state call it test and your type is data type and then it'll ask you to select a data type in this instance we're using user details and don't worry about it being list or persisted as I've just said you can click or not a list is if you want it as a list of objects which we don't in this instance and then just click create and then you'd have a new data type app state variable which is connected to our user details app state basically so that's how you set up it to use with a variable so so if you want to got information you want to store locally about a user or a situation or whatever it may be an event or whatever you can think of really and you want to store it locally and not in a database if you do it by data type then you can obviously assign the different fields some data and allows you to organize your data better so data types are pretty handy for that so just delete that and we don't really need that at all so if i go to the page so what we've got is we're just displaying the user's settings and in the text we are assigning the values to our data type via the user app state variable so we've got the app state variable called user and we're going for a data structure field we're selecting the field name and we've got default variable and the ui variable and then likewise this one we are assigning the data structure field ftp and then on this one i'll just click on that and Let's just remove that one for a second. So we want to go app state, use up, and then it'll ask us for the data structure field there, look. And we want manufacturer in there, and we'll call it just so we know. And then obviously we've got the email there, the change email is related to um, something else when we change the email if we got it stored in the database but for this demonstration that doesn't do anything but yeah and we've got the same there we are assigning that text the value of the email address in our stored in our app state variable via the data type so what we've also got on this example we have got a component called update user and in it we have got some text fields so we've got one for name, one for email, one for FTP, uh, which is that cycling term I mentioned, and then one for equipment, and then 
basically cancel out of it obviously and then if you to click on save what that does it simply updates our app state variable so we've got the fields related to the data type and what doing we're setting the value for all of them and we're doing it essentially via the widget states so the text fields name email FTP manufacturer we are assigning those to the values of the app state variable against each of the data type types that we have created so email FTP manufacturer etc and then we're just dismissing the dialogue and then navigate back to users to update the page so so this is one way of using a custom data type so you can assign to an update vari app state variable store stuff locally so it's easy to navigate easy to recall and keeps your app nice and tidy in terms of your data storage so if we go into test mode so we're in test mode and you can see we've got some information already displayed on the page so if we click on update and you can see the data store that's in the variable via the data types we've got as our initialized information within our text field so if we want to maybe change the name to John Smith I haven't formatted the things very well but hey ho it's not the end of the world and we'll maybe change that to a Surveilo and then if we click save you can see we've updated the values within the app state related to the data type and you can see we've got our app state variable here user and we've got the values there stored so that's one way of using custom data type to store data in your apps it's pretty useful uh, now the next one I'm going to show you is how we use them to process information that we are receiving from an API call and you can do this if it's coming from your own database or if you're doing it from an external API it kind of the same thing so let's jump into another app and have a look at that so here we have got an AI assistant where we can chat with it and ask it some questions I've done a video on how to set an AI assistant up again details coming on screen uh, right now somewhere and essentially on this one we have got custom data type called messages and our fields are role and message and what we are doing is we are returning a response from the OpenAI API and we're extracting the role and the message fields from within the JSON response from the API and then we're displaying them on our page basically so our list view has got a value which is the thread content so um, what we're doing in actual fact if we retrieve the thread this is the custom action that we are calling to retrieve the data on the thread and what we're actually doing here we're extracting out of the entire response just the role and message information the rest of it we're sort of not using so we're creating a new JSON object out of the full response just with the role and message so in this instance we're simplifying the data we're getting back um, and that's what we are using to populate our list view and that was done via the button so there's a few actions on here but the one we're interested in is retrieve the thread and our action output is the thread content and that is the data that we're simplifying into essentially a JSON with just the role and messages and then what we're doing then we're assigning the values of the thread content to our custom data type so our variable name for our thread content response we're calling chat so that's our chat with the AI so we're returning the thread content which is our list of roles and messages that we've extracted from our full response and we're giving that variable a name chat and then to display that information we are simply taking our chat items from our variable 
and assign them to a data type. So to data type, data type message, a data structure field is going to be role. And then I've got, again, the default variable values. And then likewise, we've got the same and we are assigned to the structure field message. One thing to note upon this, the name of your field needs to exactly match the name of your response. So whatever response you're getting back from the API you're calling or from your super base tables or whatever, your custom data type field needs to match that exactly. So role and message, the field name needs to exactly match the data type that you're receiving back from your API call. Like I say, this is one that I filtered out. I have a, another example here, which is also a app state variable. So we've got an app state variable called order. This is a menu ordering app. And our data type is menu, basically. And it is a list in this instance. So that means we've got multiple objects within it. And a data type menu. We've got the name, the cost, and the meal order ID. They are the name, cost, and of the item that is being ordered on the menu. So if we go to our page, and what happens is as you navigate through the app, add in item to your order, they get stored in our app state variable. So we've got a field of name and cost there we're adding. And then when they get to check out, our list view is obviously then our app state variable called order. And we're giving that variable name custom order. And then we're mapping those values via the data type to the order, which essentially we then send the value to the checkout based on the order they've created so again another app state variable option the only difference is this one is a list so our list view is a list of items which is our order which the variables a list custom order so that gives us our list and then we're just extracting all those items in the list out to create the checkout page and then our user then go to check out and pay the bill but that's all done via a custom data type and an app state variable so I'll go one more from a API call. I say, so this example, we are once again using the AI from OpenAI. And this one, we're asking for a step-free route from A to B on the London Underground. And we're returning essentially our JSON from the AI. And we are extracting the information into a data type and displaying it in this custom component. So... In this instance, if we go get root. Once again, we're extracting the information we want out of the response from the open into a simplified JSON. And in actual fact, in this instance, we're actually adding it to the app state within the within the custom action. Now, the reason I do this is because it's the one you get back from OpenAI is a nested JSON, and the custom data types don't work very well with those. So if that's what you're getting, if you've not got a simple JSON, you will need to do something to extract the information you actually need out of it into a more simplified version for the data type to understand it correctly. So in terms of the nested JSON, what we've got here is, this is what I'm talking about. This is the response or an example of response from the OpenAI API. And basically you've got objects within objects. And when they're sort of embedded deep inside of the objects, the data types in their simplest form like I've just explained to you won't be able to necessarily pick out the necessary bits from them so what I've been doing is essentially picking out the information we need so that maybe the content for instance we had the role and the content of the role and messages if you remember and then on the other one we had the line start finish stations that one is slightly different because essentially that is to do with the prompt I am sending the AI. So what will happen is chat GPT will just send you a text. It would send you a set of instructions, but I've told it to give me the instructions in a very specific manner, which is how we're extracting this information out of it in this way, a bit beyond the scope of this, but that's why I've done it. I have actually done a video on the prompts to do that. 
switch will come on screen now if you want to look at it. This is a little bit of a better look at the nested JSON and like I say we would be extracting out essentially the content is what we're doing. So that is what we are simplifying in these examples but say this one being slightly different. So yeah so let's uh, have a look at how we're using it. We are basically mapping the bits we want from the nested JSON into a more simplified version and then just adding it to an app state within the function. We could actually just return the more simplified JSON that we did in the previous example obviously. I just did it differently this way and we've got an, then an app state called root and then what happens is our user if we go to roots they essentially say I want to go from A to B and A being a station or a landmark or whatever and if it's a landmark just the AI will then be told to go and find the nearest station that kind of stuff so essentially from station to station click on get root the AI goes and gets the root it displays the root here now what we do have is a container just so this is not important to the data type but depending on which value we got for the line we have color in the container the same color as that line on the London Underground map because London Underground each line has its own color and these are the colors for them so whatever line it returns for the start and end stations we're just coloring the container that color so that's why everything's white at the minute um, but it isn't when you run the app but essentially what we're doing we've got a list view again and the value of our list is roots and we're calling the variable AI roots our root which we're taking back via the custom action here and we're extracting like I say start the end and the line out of the nested JSON that you get in the response and then once again the text objects are being mapped via the data type so we've got the data type AI roots which we've got start end and line so start station end station and which line you need to be on and simply they're being mapped to the text objects via the data type from the JSON app state variable which is creating the list and that's another example so they're really powerful you're going to use them all the time if you're building apps in Flutterflow custom data types really recommend you spend a bit of time learning about them and hopefully you can use them in your apps and if that was useful please consider like subscribe as usual and I'll speak to you in the next video